everybody. Welcome to the webinar. How's it going? Glad you could make it. I'm here with my good friend and coworker, Mr. Laurent Massia, our uh, senior director of our Managed Switches and uh, heads up the Pro AV Design team. How are you doing this morning? Oh, uh, thank you, John, very well. And uh, thank you for having me as usual, doing uh, these things with you. It's always a pleasure. Some of the standards that we've supported for a long time, actually, are, are there's a range of these and they do different things. We'll talk about some of these coming up and how they compare and complement each other in some cases and contrast. And, and they uh, they can all be done, of course, through a neck ear switch. So as we kind of come into here, Laurent, this is where I need your help, really. Yeah, sure. So that, that looks like a complicated, complicated table, right? Because before the uh, transition to IP, you got many, many cables, you know, analog, digital. Uh, so look at that video, audio, the time synchronization, uh, the control, the power, compression, video quality. Uh, so all that was most of the time was requiring a whole lot, many of cables. So ST2110, this is the, the protocol uh, from the uh, 70, is simplifying that because not only on one link, you can carry the uh, video, but on the same link, you carry the audio, the PTP, the time protocol, the PTP, and also all the control. And if you happen to have a PWE powered uh, a gateway, for instance, or encoder or decoder, uh, then you can also get the power out of the same link, uh, provided it's copper. Uh, you know, John, we did not find a way to carry uh, PeeWee on fiber as of yet. So the compression, the video quality, all that is based on the software. And we'll see that the bandwidth, uh, you know, uh, is different. So the SMT usually, this is uh, lossless and not compressed. But see now on the right hand side, you have new uh, new entrance, right? You have NDI, you have IPMX, Dante AV, SRT, and uh, Zixi that was uh, most of the time was used for, you know, uh, 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 sending out uh, uh, one transfers. So let me say a, a few words because uh, we all know NDI, Netgear AV participated to the success of the NDI many years ago with the, the first certified profiles that could solve the problem with NDI and Dante in the same VLAN, the same broadcast domain. But NDI is a very good technology because it's a plug and play and, you know, it's simpler. You can say for maybe smaller broadcast studios. What's interesting here is that IPMX, there's a lot of uh, excitement about IPMX at all the shows. We are going to be at the NAB in a couple of weeks from now. You'll see that live on the Netgear website uh, booth. So IPMX is uh, probably a transition in between the 70 ST2110 world and the other worlds. Why? Because IPMX lets you choose your compression. You have several codecs you can work with. So you can go from uncompressed to lightly compressed to a whole lot of compression, usually with very good codecs. But the philosophy remains the same. As for ST2110, you have one cable. The video, the audio, and the time synchronization is uh, all on the same cable, including the control. So back to the IPMX, what I want to tell you, John, is that all our video profiles uh, are actually certified by now, by the aims uh, for IPMX. And uh, IPMX can reside on the network that is not PTP aware. So the time synchronization can be actually uh, handled by the source and the destination endpoints directly, or IPMX can be happy enough in the PTP aware network, kind of a PTP ST2110 network. And this is for this reason that there's some excitement because IPMX can be a good transition in between the two worlds. And IPMX will probably open the way to some gateways, mixing and matching NDI, Dante AV, and the uh, SRT and Zixi. All right, so this is all I can tell you because it looks complicated, but at the end of the day, what we're gonna see now is that all that is quite plug and play when we are using the right profiles on the Netgear AV line. So let's talk about our support for all these different standards. This is, this is cool because as Laurent mentioned, we support all this stuff. So whether it's IPMX, SRT or Zixi, all of our video profiles support that. AES67, we have a profile for that, Dante, for Dante Audio and Dante Video. 
as well have their own profiles. And NDI, of course, we've done for a while as well. And separate yeah. profiles that are certified for all this. We should add NDI 6, actually. Sorry, I forgot. We That's went right. live with NDI 6 at ISC in Barcelona a few weeks ago. So we have profiles specifically for that. Laurent will show you this today. And even since they came out, we've we've done a lot. And, and Laurent's updated that firmware for these profiles to make sure it works in a range of situations. So that's cool. Okay, so we have a mobile WAC. Uh, and uh, as you can see, I'm using the Netgear Engage. So a Netgear Engage is an application that you can get, you know, for free out of the Netgear website, netgear.com slash engage. I'm using the release version. I'm not this time using a QA or future roadmap version. This is what you can get today if you test it today. Just download it, netgear.com slash engage 2037. And engage lets you create your site under the controller management. So I'm calling this mobile rack the EMEA fly case. And we have the exact same rack on its way to Las Vegas this week as we uh, speak for the uh, NAB show. Uh, so uh, when you have a site, you can then uh, uh, manipulate that site using the Dropbox. So your own engage that can reside on a Windows PC, that can reside on a Mac, uh, lap, laptop, macOS laptop, and soon, we'll see soon, maybe on a uh, box later this year, uh, you can actually then switch from one side to the other. How does it work? Well, uh, from uh, the beginning, you will just un unpack the Netgear AV switches, whatever uh, M series, and you will discover them. How? Well, uh, using the network setup, you can use uh, engage on the on the PC with a DHCP address or a static IP address. As you know, the switches, when they come out of the factory, the Netgear AV switches, they come with DHCP clients on their VLAN 1 interface or on their out-of-band OOB interface. So a great uh, quick way is to actually uh, temporarily use your Engage as a DHCP server so you can easily discover all the switches and assign other IP addresses later. But uh, in my case, I am using a, a dynamic uh, uh, NIC. All right. So uh, from the, uh, if the computer that you are using can access those switches, you just discover them all and onboard them all. So on this network, I have like 10 uh, switchers and I do have a router and two access points. All right, the router is here. So let's get back to the topology and uh, configure this network a very certain way. And John, what I wanted to do today is to show you how the Netgear AV team would have done the opening, opening ceremony of the Olympic Games last summer, remember? Uh, by the Seine River in Paris. So the opening ceremony was, uh, you know, for the audio that was an ST2110 installation with uh, Riddell, Bolero and Artist. But everything I'm gonna tell you right now would also apply the very same way to Harman, uh, RTS Intercom, to Clearcom, to Gringo, all our great uh, AES 67 ST2110 intercom partners. So at the opening ceremony, we couldn't play because the, of course, the RFP and all that uh, happened many years ago and Netgear didn't have ST2110 by, 10, by then. But I'm gonna show you the exact same architecture that they used with a lot more cost and a lot more configuration. So what we want to do on this network, we have a cool switch which is a SMT ST2110 version called the 16V 4C, the 4350 VSM 4320C. I'm using it as a core switch and I am deploying those edge switches, you know, in a two tier uh, design. And yes, I do have a, a little extension, a third tier with a, a, a 10 gig 12X 12F switch there and a little 4250 switch right there. And then I have two access points. What you want to do with me, John, today is that we want to deploy in one click a hybrid SMT ST2110 profile across the entire network. And what we want to do is that we want to act as a boundary clock 
on that core switch. And we want to have all these other switches doing transparent clock for the audio AES67 intercom, okay? So let's go to the side settings. And for this, I'm not even going to create a VLAN, John. You know, usually I, I go crazy with VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 and VLAN yeah, 30, yeah. and we want to do the colors and all that. But here, because we have 600 endpoints with hundreds of antennas, hundreds of bell packs, hundreds of headsets, we want to allocate this entire network for uh, uh, ST2110 in the AES67 audio a PTP profile. And to be very transparent with you, during the opening ceremony uh, at uh, in Paris, it was not Netgear AV, that was other brands. It was a mixed uh, configuration with brand A and brand B. I don't have to disclose that, but I can tell you that was a week long of configuration and you got two networks, okay? two identical networks like that, so that all the endpoints were connecting to the blue and connecting to the red network for redundancy, ST2022-7. But from a network standpoint, from a configuration standpoint, those two networks were identical, okay, with different grandmaster clocks. So we are not going to create a VLAN. We are using the VLAN 1. Uh, the default, you know, usually we do video, you know, the standard video over IP. And we are going to edit this VLAN 1 together. And we are going to review the list of profiles. We have a lot of profiles. One of them is the uh, audio video SEMTI profile that we can use with ST2059-2 for the video or AES67 for audio. But what I'm very happy to present, and this is live, this will be live in two weeks from now at NAB. Look at that. We have a hybrid SMTI AS67 core and audio AS67 edge. So maybe I need the help from the marketing team for a better name, but yeah. let me show you what it is. Okay, so it, we are- That saying, says what it does. That's the best kind of name because it says what it does right away and people know right away. No help. From so me. we are selecting this profile. Uh, this is the VLAN 1, all right? And of course, we want to do TC, we want to do PTPv2, BC, and Grandmaster, Boundary Clock, and Grandmaster. This is all enabled. I don't have to touch anything here. Next. Yes, uh, let me talk a little bit about Wi-Fi, because you saw it. I have two access points. So that's my VLAN 1. I am saying, yes, I do Wi-Fi on that VLAN 1. I'm using a global site SSID, which is the Netgear Netgear EMEA fly case 2025. And um, uh, the very simple implementation that we have done here is that you can create groups, John. So for instance, all the uh, 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 devices that will connect with this password, they will be placed in that global group, okay? But you can create several groups so that you can isolate them from the other groups. If you want to have a specific kind of access with some groups that you don't want to have an interference with other groups, okay? So this is called MPSK. This is very simplistic, but as I told you, this is pure convenience. So if during the opening ceremony of the Olympic games, and I have a few Wi-Fi stations, I'm just mm -hmm. doing that and boom, I have my Wi-Fi running. So that, that's a pre pre shared key, MPSK. For people, exactly. people like that. Yeah. multiple pre-shared keys. Yeah. When we edit the VLAN 1, we have our topology, okay? And then we have uh, all the ports. They already belong to the VLAN 1, right? So I'm not going to touch anything, and we are going to click Apply. So during that moment, a week long of fastidious configuration for boundary clock and transparent clock just happened on the network. Amazing. Do you want to see it? Because I think you want you want to see it. Uh, well, everybody uh, wants to verify that, and that's that's the thing we found out. I think from this AVUI really and all the profiles is that people see okay, it's cool. They've seen me do short videos on it. You doing great demos, but they want to see the results. They want to verify it, right? Trust but verify. Absolutely. So 
Really quick, under the site settings, I did not show you uh, how the network from a uh, IP, uh, uh, how the network is configured. You know, I'm a simple guy, you know that. So I like when my switches have a static fixed IP interface on, on their VLAN one management VLAN interface. This way, nothing bad can happen, you know. And uh, my main switch is 101011. And then I have the .254 on the router. And then all the other switches have incremental IP addresses, OK? And for the sake of this exercise, I'm showing the OOB. I'm not managing this network using OOB out of band. So I assign the same static address, 192.168.0239, to all switches. So that this way, if I have to, mm -hmm. I can just come to a switch, connect to the OOB, and access it locally. All right, so going back to the topology, let me show you. The first thing we want to verify is the core switch. Are we doing boundary clock on that core switch? Yes or no? And who is the grandmaster? And then we'll inspect that 4350 gigabit switch, the 48G for XF. So in order to verify, we click on that model. From the topology, we are going to click configure we are landing on the ev user interface that you have john right out of the box without engage uh, out of the box using the switch ip interface we are going to the network profiles and without too much surprise too much suspense we should see that the vlan one is using the audio video sempty on this very switch, I selected the hybrid profile site-wide, but this very switch is doing the SEMTI profile. And let me verify that with you. Let's review the PTP V2 and see the PTP V2 boundary clock process is running. It's in the true state. We are using the AES67. That's what we want for Intercom, right? The AES67 profile in the two-step mode. I'm not doing any complicated layer three. I'm using the, the clock at the layer two. And this switch became the master. Why? Because despite that in my BMCA, I have the default local clock priority one and two set to 128, that's our default. Nobody could beat it on my network because I do not have a dedicated Meinberg or Tektronix clock on this network, okay? So this switch didn't find any better. So this switch is acting as a master, grandmaster, all right? So we have a pro AV design team, Laurent's head up for years to handle your switch choices, your network design, help you get up and running so you won't need us next time, perhaps. So check them out. It's easy. There's an email address or you can go right to the website and a form. We have a huge training academy, if you didn't know, and maybe you're on the list and you got an email. We just moved to a different platform, uh, which is great. Uh, our, our global training manager, Gus Marcondes, has been hard at work with some new courses. We have level one, we have level two, Netgear switch certification now. Thank you all for your support. And John, thank you for hosting us. Great information as always. And uh, we appreciate your support. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.